artists and welcome back to my channel. My name is Margot Halleck and I've been a professional artist and designer for over 17 years. And I want to share some of the knowledge that I've picked up over the years during my career to help you work smarter and get more creative in the process as well. So today's video is all about these little um, swatch cards that you may have seen on some of my swatching videos. I often get asked why I have this little deck uh, of cards sitting on my desk at all times and why I go through the trouble of making these little things in the first place. So today I'm going to tell you why these little pieces of paper are so amazing and why you should think about possibly making some of your own because they're gonna make your painting process so much easier. So what many of you might not know about me yet, and I'm thinking of maybe doing a video about this. So comment below if you're interested in learning more. I trained and worked as an art director and graphic designer at many of the biggest design agencies in New York for I would say the greater part of my career. So while painting and drawing have always been a part of you know, me and in my blood, my professional training was predominantly working you know, with computers, doing typesetting, package design, Design, branding, logos, and much more corporate client work. Why do I bring this up? Well, a lot of that history and the processes that I picked up during that part of my career stayed with me and, you know, they still influence my creative process to this day. And I think that's what's really interesting about artists and, you know, how different we are is we all come from different backgrounds and different things that we used to do in our lives will influence our work and, and our workflow. So coming back to these swatches real quick, one of the most essential tools in a designer's arsenal are the use of swatch books. And there are a lot of reasons why we use them. So that, that could be spanning from color accuracy to production, as well as to be able to really quickly and efficiently define a color palette and get it approved when you're working with a client. So it's sort of like, you know, being at a home improvement store and picking out paint chips and before seeing what colors go together, you know, before you paint your whole living room, uh, you know, an entire color, then you can actually see, you know, by taking those paint chips, bringing them home and setting them in your space, you know, whether or not you think they work together or not. So I make these color swatches for basically the exact same reason with the client being myself. So when I'm starting a project, you know, and trying to figure out, for example, if I want a warmer green or a cooler green to go into my color palette, I can put these chips side by side and immediately see if the colors work together or if one of them is overpowering the rest. I store them in this little container right here, kind of like old school library cards. Kids out there probably won't know what I'm talking about, but people my age and older might remember old library cards and the Dewey Decimal System and how you, know, you used to look up books in this sort of um, you know, card kind of format. So I organize them uh, by color family from yellows and oranges to blues and greens so I can always find everything really quickly. And of course, these aren't the only color options, you know, for my paintings. And very often, the final colors will be a mixture of different pigments and colors without, you know, anything being straight from the tube. But this always feels like a really good starting point to get a quick and efficient overview of the direction I want to take with my painting. A great bonus is if you're doing work for a client, it's even more convenient because you can get them to sign off and approve a color or a color palette before you even start painting. And that ensures that everyone is on the same page. So no miscommunications or setting the wrong expectations because they'll have an idea of what to expect and you can avoid a tricky situation where, you know, expectations are not aligned in terms of what the color direction is. For example, I have a sketch right here of a watercolor illustration that I'm doing for a client and right off the bat I know that a teal or turquoisey color is going to be my focal point here. So putting that down next to my sketch I can start to build out the whole look of this colorway before my brush even touches the page. So I know I want there to be a turquoise that's gonna be what I call the star of the show. Then I can start building the supporting cast or all the secondary colors and, and supporting actors around that decision. 
Once I have that all set up, I can take a quick picture with my iPhone to send that over to the client so that we're all on the same page. And that's it. So I talked a lot about the how and why I use these color swatches, but let me know in the comments below if you're interested in maybe a video describing how I make the swatches, maybe a step-by-step -step of how I label them and how I organize them. And like I said, this is a very, very useful tool to have in your arsenal. I think that if you get into the process of using them, you'll see that it really does speed things up a lot and, um, and just makes things a lot easier. As always, thank you so much for watching and for joining me every week on these videos and I will see you next time.